Hey guys, welcome to Code Decode. Today in this video, we will be covering the Saga design patterns for microservices Spring Boot interview questions. We will be covering what is Saga, why Saga, how Saga solves the problem and what problem is actually solved by Saga. So let's get started. Please like, share and subscribe to support us so that this video reaches to more of the people who are preparing for interviews. So first of all, why do we really need the Saga? We know that we as a developers, while developing some softwares, commonly face few problems. Now, few brilliant minds came to the rescue and created some really efficient, performance-wise great solutions to these common problems. And these solutions becomes the design pattern in our life. So, microservices also have such design patterns. So, whenever you are creating a microservice architecture, you are bound to face few issues as a developers. These few issues are those which are common to all of us. So few people came together and created few design patterns, which are the solutions, a beautiful solutions to such problems of microservice architecture. So today we are going to cover the very first and very important problem that is the distributed transactions. We will see the problem first. We will see what is Saga and what is Saga design pattern. And then we will see how the Saga design pattern provides a beautiful solution to such problems. So this problem is actually getting started as soon as we move from monolithic application to microservice architecture. Today, I'm going to take a very simple example of Swiggy and Zomato. Now, whenever you log into the Swiggy or Zomato app, what you do? You choose your dishes, you add them to the cart, check out, make payments, get your order delivered to yourself at your doorstep. And once the delivery is successful, your order is marked as completed. Beautiful set of transactions, right? Now, in monolithic application, it serves very good. Why? Because there is only one database, there are multiple tables like order table, payment table, delivery table, etc. Now, everything happens in one single atomic transaction. So let me give you an example here. So, in a monolithic architecture, what happens? You create your order, you make your payment, you get your order delivered at your doorstep, and then you, your order is marked as successful. So, everything happens in a single transaction. Now, if anything fails, the whole thing is reverted because it is atomic in nature and the whole transaction is rolled back and your order is marked as cancelled if anything fails. Great, monolithic has no such issues because you can do it in a single same application. But when you move to microservice architecture, now you segregate the whole application into multiple different microservices like order service to handle all your orders, payment service to handle and validate your payments and delivery service to handle your deliveries at your doorsteps. But now the happy case goes like this. You have an order service. It, it accepts your order and it creates your order and updates your order table. As soon as it updates your order table, a next event is triggered, which causes a payment screen on your app or your phone. And it asks you to make your payment. It validates the payment. And then a next transaction goes to the delivery service. When your payment is done, a delivery is scheduled, a delivery partner is assigned to you and delivery is done at your doorstep. When delivery is done and the, the delivery partner makes it successful, your order is marked as successful or completed. This is the happy path flow in microservice architecture. Now, what happens if your delivery is failed or your delivery partner is not assigned to you? So, what is the worst case when delivery is failed and no partner assigned to you? Your payment was done, your money got deducted and now you have no food. So, at this point of time, payment was done. This microservice has done its task. Everything is done. It has validated your payment. You have done your task beautifully. And now you are waiting for your food. But the Swiggy or Zomato does not have a delivery partner at 4 a.m. in the morning. What will happen? Your payment gone. Your food is not there. Worst customer service. What you will expect? You will expect that your payment should be reverted and your order should be marked as cancelled. For your payment to be reverted, you need a transaction rollback. But in microservice, this is a one whole standalone application. The application scopes and a transaction boundary starts here and ends here. So if your delivery is failed, only the transaction can roll back to this point, to the delivery point and your delivery can be marked as failed. But your payment cannot be reversed because it was a part of different transaction boundary. It was a part of different application hole itself. So this is a problem. When your delivery is failed, a single local transaction rollback will not be able to revert your payment. So this was the problem. The transaction did go, get rolled back, but only in the scope of transaction was in delivery service, microservice. The boundary for this transaction started and ended in the same application that is delivery service. You cannot go back and ask your local transaction to make your changes to payment also. 
So now what about your order and payment service? Neither your money is returned with the rollback nor your status is changed from waiting to failed or cancelled. Such a bad user experience, right? And this is not expected from a food delivery application. So this is a classic example where application has completely failed to manage the distributed transaction. What is a distributed transaction? A transaction that spends across the multiple microservices becomes a distributed transaction. This is a problem and to handle such distributed transaction issues, Saga design pattern came into picture. Now let's see what is Saga and then we will see what is Saga design pattern. So each of the local transaction which is responsible for making the changes in the same microservice becomes the local transaction becomes your Saga. So here we can see we have four Sagas. T1, T2, T3 and T4. These four transactions are responsible for their own specific transactions. For example, create an order and modify the orders table. This is Saga 1. Now, open the payment page, make you do the payments, validate your payments that and update the payment tables. That is transaction 2, that is Saga 2. Deliver at your doorstep and update the delivery tables. Transaction 3, Saga 3. And after the order is delivered successfully, that's transaction 4, Saga 4. So that's the local sequence of sagas. Now, what each saga has a job to do. So each saga, you can see here, has two jobs. First, to modify your orders table, modify everything that is required in the order microservice, to create a new order, and then create an event in sequential order so that payment page can be opened. So two things, do your local task, by the local transaction and trigger an event to the next microservice in sequence. Now payment microservice Saga is responsible for making the payment validation of payments and triggering an event for delivery if the transaction is successful. If the delivery is successful, then creating another event to mark the order as valid. So these are the two tasks of a Saga, a single Saga has to do. A single local Saga has to update the current microservice and make required changes in the tables and in the data. Secondly, publish an event to trigger the next transaction for the next microservice in sequence. So this is Saga, a local transaction. Now how Saga handles the failures of individual Sagas? Now how Saga design pattern handles this kind of issues? In this diagram, you can see there is no transaction handling, there is no transaction management for distributed transactions. So if delivery fails, there is no going back. Your delivery can be marked as fail, but your payment is not going to come back. Your order is not going to mark as failure. So this is not a proper transaction management for microservices. Here we have to implement a Saga design pattern. Now how your Saga changes this whole flow and makes it successful is here. You have an order service, you have the payment microservice, you have a delivery microservice. Now Saga 1 comes, it generates a create order event, modifies the order service with all the data and tables required and hits the created order event. Now the second thing comes is the payment microservice is invoked with that event. Now the Saga 2 comes into picture which is the local transaction for the payment microservice. Changes are done, payment is validated and a new event is triggered for delivery microservice. With that trigger another microservice local transaction Saga is invoked, delivery is done successfully and when done a transaction 4 with the event is triggered and order is marked as completed. But so what this was a successful flow grade, the same as we had there. But Saga invents a failure flow. Failure flow says you have to have a revert event also when the things fails. So whenever your delivery fails, not only the Saga responsible for delivery microservice rollbacks everything done in the delivery microservice was, but also raises an event called as delivery failed event. Now this delivery failed event is responsible for triggering another event in the previous microservice in the backward direction which is reverse payment event. Now this reverse payment event is responsible for reverting the payment you have done so that your money that has got deducted gets added into your account. So this is a revert event. Now when this is done the revert event is responsible for triggering the cancel order event which is going to mark your order as cancelled so that you can go ahead with the next order. So this is the failure flow which is added by the saga for you. So each and every event or saga is also going to be associated with a 
revert event if anything goes wrong then the current saga is going to call the revert saga and the revert saga is responsible to call everything in line from where it came from the start so till the start everything is going to be reverted so if you can see this is not a rollback this is a revert you will never be able to do anything called as rollback with distributed transaction the only thing you can do is to revert what changes and what harm or what damage you have done so you have taken the payment you were not able to give a delivery partner that was the damage to the client so a revert payment is to be initiated and the revert payment will internally initiate the cancel order event so this the, the same flow which goes here will go in the opposite direction here that's the failure flow for you so saga design pattern provides a transaction management by using the sequence of local transaction called as sagas each and every microservice has its own database and is able to manage their own local transaction in an atomic way we know that one single application is capable enough to manage the transactions with asset properties but the problem was the microservice architecture a single transaction traversing multiple microservices is not handleable for that saga came into picture so saga pattern groups these local transactions and sequentially inv sequentially invoke one by one so this was t1 t2 t3 getting invoked one by one each local transaction updates the database and publishes an event to trigger the next local transaction but one thing that is added by saga here is the very important thing if even one of these step is failed then saga patterns triggers a rollback transaction these are the set of compensating transactions that roll back the changes on the previous microservice so these are the compensating transaction these are you, it seems to be a rollback but it is not a rollback it is a compensation It, since it is not able to assign a delivery partner it is compensating with you with giving you back the money at least that much a app should do for you so that is a compensating transaction that roll backs the changes done by the previous microservice and restore the data consistency so that since you didn't get your food you didn't get your money deducted you get it back in your bank account so that's the compensating transactions in saga how to implement so this sum seems go so good right i mean wow you have a compensating reverting everything is there but how to manage it isn't it a difficult task to see how to manage such kind of situations where failure occur where the event has to go when the second event has to fire this seems so much complicated right so we have two ways to implement the saga we need a single point of interaction between all of these microservices that is for sure so there are two ways that is choreographer and orchestration now choreographer saga design pattern says that you can coordinate with a single message broker so client will say create an order message broker will create an event create order event so that saga will make all the changes for the order service and then release an event known as make the payment now order is successfully created now message broker will send the event to payment service saying please validate the payment once the payment is validated the payment service sends a message or a event back to message broker saying okay the payment is successful please go ahead and deliver that food to the client the message broker sends an event to delivery service please make a doorstep delivery to the customer the delivery service makes the changes delivers it to the users and sends a event order delivered successfully so this is the choreography design pattern where there is going to be a message broker which is completely asynchronous communication and this is how they are going to communicate with each other so choreography is a way to coordinate local sagas where participants exchange events without a without a central point of control now everybody is going to interact each other with this message they are going to take the message send the message choreography each microservice also runs its own local transaction and publishes the events to the message broker that triggers the next local transaction and that is how the next transaction is initiated that is through the message broker there are so much advantages of this this is very simple workflow like right? you just need one extra rabbit and queue active and queue or kafka here that's it nothing more so only few participants and no coordination logic there is no additional service or java class or any any kind of additional thing added 
for maintaining or implementation. Now, also, there is no single point of failure since the responsibilities is distributed across Saga patterns, participants. So, these are the Saga participants. After creating the order, if order service fails, the payment will be done and delivery will be there. So, there is no single point of failure. But when it comes to orchestration saga patterns, there is a single point of failure that we will see soon. So, but there are some disadvantages to choreography design pattern also. First of all, workflow can become very confusing when adding new steps. That is, it becomes difficult to track which saga is listening to which command. Now, payment service is listening to order service, delivery service is listening to payment service, but it becomes confusing as in and more and more messages will be here. It becomes confusing on who is listening to what and what Transaction is being performed by that particular application. There is no backtracking. There is no track of who is listening what. What if something goes wrong? Who has written to which traga? Backtracking is very difficult. So this was a problem with choreography design part. Now there is also a risk of cyclic dependency where order is sending a message to payment but payment is also requiring some message from order service. So there is a cyclic dependency problem that can happen because they have to consume each other's command. Now, one is waiting for second command, second is waiting for first command. This becomes a cycle and there can be a problem in choreography design part. And also integration testing becomes very difficult because all of these services are running the simulator transaction. So testing of this also becomes difficult because you don't know which service is going to listen to which message and how it is going to react. So integration testing also becomes very difficult here. So came the orchestration design pattern. The orchestration saga design pattern is a way to coordinate the saga again but in a very controlled and centralized manner. And it, there is going to be an orchestrator, which is again going to be a Java component for us. This arc orchestrator is going to handle all kind of events going here and there. And it is going to be a single point of connection for each and everybody here. So orchestration is going to be a way to coordinate between Saga with a centralized control, which tells the Saga what local transaction to execute. Now, orchestrator handles all the transactions and tells the participant which operation to be performed on event. So, what is the task of orchestrator? First of all, to execute a saga. Second, to store the state of each task. If the task is successful, trigger another event to next microservice in line. But if it is failed, then you have to call the reward transaction. So, that task is also done by orchestrator. So, it not only commands which microservice has to work, but it also commands if in case any microservice fails to do the task, then it has the responsibility to revert it till the start. So, this is the main person who is going to be a centralized person going to command everybody and also going to manage the state. If successful, go ahead with another local transaction. If failure, call the compensating transaction. So, it handles failure recovery with the compensation transaction also. So, this is a single point of centralized task. So, you give a call to from a client to orchestrator. It sends, go ahead with make your local changes. If anything goes wrong, report me directly. When something goes wrong, a revert transaction is created or else the next local transaction is created. So, every command is going from orchestrator to each and everybody and they are not going to just listen to anything. Orchestration is going to give the command. They are not going to listen to any message present in the message broker. Now, what are the advantages? It is very good for complex workflows with many participants or new participant added over the time. So, this is going to reduce your Confusion in which microservice is listening to which particular command and doing what particular transaction. They cannot just go ahead and listen to any message present in the message broker. They are going to get the command directly from the orchestrator. This is suitable when there is a control over every participant in the process and control over the flow of activities. So here even you can backtrack because everything is going to be logged up with orchestrator. Orchestrator is going to lock everything. So, if, if you go through the logs, you can see what transaction is done after what. It also doesn't include a cyclic dependency because orchestrator is unilaterally dependent on Saga participants. Anybody is not going to ask or command anything to orchestrator. Orchestrator is going to command everybody. So, nobody can come back to orchestrator or do something. That's not going to happen. So, there is no cyclic dependency. There is unilateral dependency from orchestrator Two participants, that is a command dependency. That's it. 
none of the saga needs to know about any of the commands for other participants there is a clear segregation between the business logic but there is still it looks so good but still there is a disadvantage that is you have to create your own orchestrator who is going to coordinate everything so there is an additional design complexity in implementation of the coordination logic of orchestrator you have to take an extra step create your own orchestrator and manage everything at single point also this is going to create a problem because that single point will become a additional point of failure now if orchestration is down everything is down even the order service is up even though the payment service is up even though your delivery service is up if your orchestrator is down everybody is a dumb listener so this is where the single point of failure comes into picture because orchestrator is the one who commands and manages complete workflow if it is down that's it your saga design pattern is down so that was all about the saga design pattern guys there is also many more design patterns like cqrs design pattern event sourcing design patterns many many more design patterns if you want to know about that just let me know in the comment section i'll create more such videos for you thank you